Alchemist will need to get six water absorbers before he even yeah. thinks about it. Um, there's a lot of physical damage on the other side with this Queen with Drower and obviously Drow herself. I suppose if you hit that point as well, if uh, you six solid Alchemist against this Drow lineup, you're probably already won. Yes, exactly. Like then the game is in the state that you were hoping to get to in the first place. Do, um, do we want to help everyone predi with prediction? Total number of tower kills before 25. Six to ten. Before 25 with the draw, if she works... It's combined, right? It's the two teams combined. Yes. Yeah. So I think 6 to 10 sounds reasonable. I don't think IG are going to get that many, but TC should get quite a few. Yep. Okay. Uh, player with the highest net worth at the, at the end of the game. All right. Not a question. Next one. <laughs> if that is not Alchemist, they got trounced. Player so. with the highest sort of magical or pure damage done to heroes by 10. Uh, Darkseer? Would you say Darkseer, or would you actually think maybe even Oracle? I think Darkseer uh. is going to put enough shells on his allies and just maybe, you know, even if you deal damage with shell and lane, it counts up. So I think it's Darkseer or Batrider or Queen. Actually, Queen might be more likely because Qu it's Quop feels a lot better. I like Quop here, actually. I think the Darkseer, because he's against a ranged hero, will not get that much. And I last hero to be killed, I'm going to put money on Alchemist. That is the most arbitrary. Oh, to be killed the first time, not the last oh, kill of the yep. game. Last player to be killed. Yeah, so that's not the last kill of the game, but the first player that gets the his or the last player that gets the first death of the game. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, Queen of Pain. You gonna say Quop? Yeah. Even with the rotations? Yeah. You know, they I'm, don't have the best. I, I'm gonna go with Burning. I reckon Burning is gonna be very, no, that's very. A good, uh, that's a good guess as well. Very, very dodgy and run away. So that's that's all the guidance we'll give you. Now we can check out our lanes. So we'll have Burning up on the top lane. He'll be battling it out with Q. For the safe lane, Bobica roaming support. What a surprise for Bobica. Next to Sansom. Uh, Alchemist will be there in the mid from OP and then Nightwish, XSS. He's bloody named Nightwish. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he's just a fan of the, fan of the band. Could be. I don't know. Um, yeah. good, good taste if so. Uh, he'll be off lane. Like we have our, our musical expert next to us. Yeah. The man that put me onto Lindsay Sterling. And I'm fairly certain reason why Lindsay Sterling was at TI last year. I, I definitely lobbied for that super hard. I was just as oh. surprised as everyone else is there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, then oh. Dubu, Dubu and Mason will be running the bottom lane. Uh, mid lane is Arbed. Uh, he'll be supported by the clockwork of Bulba. And then top lane is Forev, who will be the off lane Bat Rider. This will be a difficult lane for Bat. Uh, Weaver has a pretty good matchup here, and in addition to that, he has the help of Disruptor just to harass in the beginning with Thunderstrike. Um, the Courier was killed, Toby, by DC in mid. Which is pretty big. That is bigger than First Blood. So DC are off to a great start. Bulba got the snipe on that under the tower, of all places, or close to the tower, uh, together with Abed. I believe, oh, actually, Abed just skilled Blink and went for it, I think. And IG were not ready for that. So that is a good start for DC in that mid lane. And as far as the bottom lane goes, I think it's just going to play out the way I expected from the start. Like, this Darkseer is going to get a bit of stuff, but he's not going to get great farm, and Drow will be okay by virtue of Oracle. So, pretty, uh, pretty chill lane overall, this bottom lane. It's just mid lane, actually. Like, with the sniper that Courier, now Bobica's trying to hold the wave back even even harder, but Bolt can be more aggressive, and Abed. Hey, we saw the Nyx versus Quop lane matchup the other day. I say Nyx versus Quop because Nyx Assassin just burnt so much mana off the Queen of Pain, but Bulba is this great buffer. He's burning it before Nyx can get into range to do the mana burn on the Queen of Pain, allowing Arbet to now be 9 6 to the Alchemist 3 1 CS in the mid. Alchemist can't play this lane. Uh, he can leech and try to get whatever possible. That was actually some pretty good farming at the tower. So we got a couple there. Um, but he will lose this lane very, very hard, unless DC mess up at this point, I think. I know it's very early to say, but you look at IG's options for rotation, they're very limited. And if DC keep Bulba in here and to pressure this uh, Alchemist, then it will be hard for him. He's actually doing better than I thought he would. So it, it looks better maybe than it is. He has 8 CS to the 11 of Queen, but Queen has 6 creeps coming into tower now. So she's doubling him up if she gets all these CS here, which he doesn't. 10k right there. Uh, <laughs> Wow, just lame. But now with, okay, so now if Disruptor comes in to help here, it's a different story. Like, if they actually open up their top lane to the Batrider a bit more and reinforce their mid, OP will have a better time. But now they're actually literally tri-laning mid and leaving the Weaver against Bat. And this will help Alk. Now he has a chance. Until until this happens, then Arbet holds the crew way between the mid-tier 1s uh, and tier 2 towers. Now they can't actually reach him. And Arbet actually take, had to take more damage than he would have liked to. Had to come back in range to grab those three range creeps that were beating into the tower. 
So Bulba does it for him this time around. And everyone's working on stacks. Yep. That is the Alchemist game. Alright, this is what I'm expecting Dubu to have. Yeah, he's got stacks of his own. Give all the space in the world to Mason. Like, this for me is scary. Like, I think Mason's even peeing out just saying, Let, leave me alone. Let me get my level 6. Because then everybody, everybody gets a huge buff up. Yep. The draw level 6 is very big for the kill potential of mid lane. <laughs> How is this tri- Why is this tri lane even here? I suppose you can beg the question, like, what would you achieve in the other lanes? What would you do against the Bat Rider? Can you even go down against the Drow as well as the Oracle? Alchemist is just... When Alchemist is in a game as a core, he is the centerpiece of the game. He is the centerpiece of the lineup that runs it, and he is the centerpiece of the lineup that's against it. Like, it that Alchemist is just one of those heroes where you play Alchemist's game. And... Obviously, the Radiant want to try to destroy it as much as possible, and the, and the Dire want to protect it as much as they can. The problem here for DC is they probably don't feel confident moving in 3 in mid themselves as well. Uh, they'd rather prioritize giving Dubu a little bit more experience, bottom pulling, stacking like you said. And, well, that does mean Alchemist is having a fairly good time. And, of course, the stacks will be coming into play as well. Oh, Bulba is going to find XXS. He doesn't really have any help, though, so he wants to back off. Yeah, I don't think Bulba really wanted to find anybody just then. He wanted the Bounty Rune. Yep. Didn't get it. Success protected it nicely, and... And he also stole the regeneration rune away from Abed. Abed did the entire loop down, dragged the creep wave with him, and uh, took the pressure out of mid lane in order to try and achieve that regeneration rune. He's gonna play into OP a bit again. But I, I like... I like the way IG are approaching this. Like, the way they're moving their heroes around and distributing their resources is... In my mind, a uh, very good use of their heroes. Uh, the short start top with Disruptor just to secure that lane and give Weaver a good start and get a level, and then they realize, okay, OP is getting targeted really hard this game by these two, we're gonna help outnumber, and then it's an Alchemist game, so we can't let Alchemist just get sacked. He will... You can have the mentality that Alchemist is gonna catch up eventually, but it's so much better if you can just secure him a somewhat even early game, because then he's gonna run with it. I'm interested to see the, like, why Mason went for the second point up in the Frost Arrows over the Aura. Like, he's not being harassed in the lane at all. Uh, Going for the second point up in Frost against the Darkseer, maybe makes him think he needs to surge earlier. Uh, uh, over just having the Aura. The the second point in Frost Arrows is very high value because you know the scaling is plus sixteen percent per level. Yep. And it's I would think it's because he's playing with Oracle, so he has someone who can actually remove the surge. And if you remove the surge, the slow really matters for running down the Darkseer. But I mean, I guess I'm with you for now. It hasn't really been useful at all. Oh, uh, Bulba. It could also just be habit. <laughs> Turns on the battery assault. He came up to leech the experience which he thought OP was farming, or to check out the Ancients. Yep. Well, fine, Q. Oh. And that should Arbet. be a failure. Oh, he has TP yeah, right. Abed blinks down. I you got, got him. Yep. Barely. Yeah. Enough control. Last player to be killed. New value, Bulba. <laughs> <laughs> the huh? game is predicting already. <laughs> okay, it has all of them. It, yeah, that's that's. Bugged, it it but literally lists them from from Bulba all the way down to Burning. I get it. So okay. <laughs> so it updates every time someone else dies. Exactly. And then it just takes the leftmost player. But exactly. It says I'm right as well still with a quad pick. It looks like. Uh, okay. it should say in progress. Yeah. <laughs> but the, I'm right with the uh, Queen of Pain uh, pure magic and pure damage. Yep. I'm on that one as well. Very good. Very good. Well done. Go team. Uh, Bulba, OP, he actually stuck around a very long time. Still has don't Bulba. actually have the level 6 on our bed. There's no burst damage and going through Chemical Rage is difficult enough. Oh, good skill Sonic. Build the 2 one, three build. This is, um... It's old school. Yeah, you would say that, but it's not like a that old build. It's just like, lately people have been focusing a bit more on Sonic, but we still see this build occasionally. Um, the, the upside of taking this is that the consistent harassment is a lot more uh, powerful because you know, you're going to use Scream a lot more times than you use Sonic, but you don't have that one-shot KO combo um, for the lane. He, I think he's going to go 2-1-4 actually, and then get Sonic on 8. That is nice. That's the case. Holding his point for now. It's better for pushing the wave and pushing the tower to have more in Scream and hold your Sonic point. Yeah, there we go. 
He's just going to play the consistent pushing game here. Oh, we can look to our, to our other pushing game. The fact that Draw Ranger does have her level 6 now, you've got that ability to have like the mass push. Arbed's already doing, like, what's that, plus 25 damage to his already, like, he's 80 plus 31. So damage to T1 towers is quite huge. Invictus Gaming, do you do you react to this? You're still in farm mode. You're, you're still trying to get the Alchemist up and running. Like, when can you fight against DC, and how much are you willing to lose? I think you need to be prepared to lose a tower or two here uh, to get ready. Alchemist wants an armlet before he fights, and he still has a bit of ways to go for that. He's trying to delay this mid push with uh, the acid spray. He went for the very greedy 204 build. Uh, sometimes we see Alks go like 303 or even 402. Oops, there's a kill. Yep. It's like uh, initiation. It wasn't even with the high level Nyx Assassin. Like he's only just hit level three and three quarters after that fight. The surge can do a lot for you, and the ion shell on the Weaver and on a Nyx is very strong. So. If they rotate this many heroes to kill the Drow, Drow is still fragile. That doesn't really have that many options against these kind of rotations. Oh, they're going for Q. Flame Break. Oh, it doesn't push him back. They need to push him back to get him in range of the Fortune's End. Which it didn't do so. And IG have had all the free time. Because the heavy rotations of DC into the other lanes, uh, Invictus Gaming, out of all of the teams, is going to be the first one to claim a tier 1 tower, oh, and it's lane. on bottom lane. He was dead. I think. Maybe not. Ah, uh, search. Give him some speed, but no. The new damage from Dubu is just way too high, and now Clockwork Cogs have tried an XXS. No way to really go. Trying to get in range of anyone to burn him. Uh, Bulba was the only one tanking it for the team, but Dubu finds a double kill now. So, Oracle gets the money, everyone gets the levels. And Mason rotates to the top lane to try and beat into the tier 1 tower there. Yep. Well, all this is happening though, Alchemist is farming. And I think it's difficult for DC to get into this... Uh, I like to call this the triangle area. These three camps over here, if you can see my pings. I don't know if you can, but... Uh, the, I cannot. The drawing, can you see this? No. You can't see that either? All right, well, so, anyway... So, are you talking about these three camps right yes, here? Yes, that, like, that is the dire like triangle. One, two, three, and... Yes. That is difficult to get into for the Radiant. It's, uh, it's, it's a hard access point because you walk up multiple high grounds to get in there and get wards, and if the Dire team has any defensive wards, you'll see them go there unless they smoke. That area is where Alchemist wins a lot of his games when he's on Dire. Uh, and DC haven't really successfully been able to invade and block camps or get information so that they can gank him. If they don't start playing this area or start taking a serious amount of map control by killing and breaking these towers, it's coming. Alk, Alk will have a good game. Look at the line being drawn. So, Bulba as well as Forev will smoke up. The line was drawn to now go up and then curve off to the left. They want to gank up the mid. They want to catch OP when he feels strong enough. So the hook shot from Bulba, perfectly lined up. They got no way to get him back out of that one. The Sonic Weave's committed as well. And that is one way to shut down OP. Get they the kill. kill and now take the tower directly after. And then what DC need to do now is to, again, get into that triangle area if they can. Uh, that kill is really, really good, and they're also pressuring top tower at the same time, so this is a very good pressure Next. place from them. Oh, Dubu! He's barely alive! The mana burn! Had to be committed there from Bobaka to actually finish the job. He thought the the initial hit with Vendetta and the uh, Earth Spike would be enough. I feel like sometimes this mana burn cast range looks absurd. <laughs> that was such a long range mana burn he got off there in the end. Does that actually count now? So we've lost three towers. I'm wondering if it counts the tower was killed because that was a denied tower. It's still it, destroyed. It actually still counts. Destroyed. It it's counts. All right, so we need another in the next 14, 13 minutes. We need three to seven. Seems reasonable. Oh, bottom lane. Dubu gets the, or that's not Dubu, that's Rev. That's for Rev. Yep, uh, going for Darkseer. Shame that thing doesn't stun anymore. Yep, got a good lasso off during the surge, but nobody could connect. No TPs, nothing. He, he trades Lasso to force Darkseer home to base. It's it's an okay trade-off. It's not great. He obviously wants the kill if he can. But just not letting IG run away with... Get away with whatever they want. Oh, that's a nice rune to get. They're going to drop two sentries to find the Disruptor. He was he, uh, he double found, detected. He found an Invis rune on the top and tried to retreat. Also, Arbed, like, solo walks up into into that... Uh, into the Dire Triangle. We can call the Dire Triangle for now. Uh, to try and contest it, it didn't work. Dubu, hello once again. I thought you just left this party. Oracle has to try and get himself back up again. Nick is going to be in the neighborhood. Able to bring him down. 
And he really has been doing a lot. You're right to actually back the Darks here. Uh, right now he's done over 2,000 damage worth of magical and pure damage. Okay, he won it? Oh, he's <gasps> winning it. Well, it was by, by 10 minutes, so he actually won at minute 10 as well. Oh. The Iron Shell ganks must have been enough. I was... I think, it th I think it must have been pretty close, though. Quap was leading at minute 7, so... Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't, you know? because Abed didn't get Sonic Wave. That's the reason why Abed's lost his points right there. <laughs> Make sure to tweet at him, Toby. Yeah. Let him know how you really feel. Yeah, we're, we, we, we were here to guide the viewers. Help the viewers! Come on, Abed. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's like you're just trying to win the game or something. <laughs> Why would you do that? Yeah, critical tournament, you know. Blink Dagger's up for the Batrider, so uh, initiation. A great way for DT to actually gank up. Now the Sonic Wave can be properly used in conjunction with Forev. If he can get that Blink into Lasso. And Bulba is hunting too. He's not the only one. Bulbica. Mason, does he notice the fact that he's actually lost his aura? Uh, Bobaka, yeah, there's a little animation ping. So be careful about doing that, that's just as good as a scan. But Bulba hasn't really cottoned on to the fact. Oh, maybe he has. Been, been he been just pinged the exact spot he's on. Burning's moving over. It depends how much he can tank the gust from Mason. He can push back Nick's assassin. They commit the storm from Q. But now the save is there from Dubu. Lasso forward. Spike Carapace caused a little bit more trouble for Forev. But here comes Arbet. Bringing in the magical burst damage that he wanted. Disruptor and Nyx will fall. Very Burning nice retreated bait. out very, very quickly. That was a really good bait from DC. They, I think they might have realized exactly what you said, that the marksmanship aura was lost. And then Bulba was just like, hey, go on me, go on me. I totally don't have an oracle and four heroes behind me. And then, oh, he did. It's still, it's only two support kills for DC, so not what they were hoping for, probably. But they get the tower directly they, after. They That's will they get want. the tower. Um, at the same time, though, Burning is putting pressure on mid. I don't know how much he's going to get out of this. He's going to get some chip damage, at least. You're getting the same on bottom. XXS was able yep. to push that bottom lane into the tier two. So and guess who's having fun at the triangle, Toby? It's OP. He's playing Alchemist. Oh, Bulba, he's having fun right now with the Darks. He managed to hookshot it in perfectly. He can't even surge himself away. Gets the wall down. Bobica, he gets clipped. They put down two sentries on the same spot once more. <laughs> that one was, I think, committed to find Nyx Assassin, who's now found Bulba. Running back in. Vendetta actually starts off with a stun and then runs away. The Gust. Well, he can't get out of this one, even with the stick charges. Mason will find the kill on the Nyx Assassin. And a very optimistic gank from Bobica turns on its head. It's a good sequence of events here for DC. I think it's very important for them too. They they need to find these kills and put on this pressure and punish IG. Because IG are basically playing 4 and 5. Like the Alchemist hasn't participated in anything for a very long time. He is getting very, very rich though. He's just finished his Radiance. Yep. Like, this is 16 minutes in with Armlet as well as Radiance. Not too shabby at all. What's his GPM? Uh, his... So GPM is 666. Okay, so I, I picked I picked 1k plus in my companion. I thought that was going to happen in at least one game with Alk. This could be that game, actually. He has a he has the potential to go really big here. I know someone who didn't pick 1k plus this time. Hi! <laughs> I remember last time I was like, it's not happening. Yeah, you it, picked we, 1k we, plus. We, it was we the, the opposite. It was the exact opposite. Yeah, because I'm like, you know what? Alchemist could appear in this tournament, but he's not going to be that good because it still takes a really, really good game from an Alchemist to yep. crack the 1k mark. That's what I said last time, and then I and was then wrong. And then there was no good one game. There was uh, one. I mean, there was one good yeah, game. There and, was one. and then I was like, okay, this time it's going to happen again. And now you don't think so. If you're right again, I'm just not going to do predictions. <laughs> I, I just quit. Like, no reason. Just quit. Toby can't be right that many times in Dota. I don't know what my average prediction score is. It's going to be pretty bad. They, they have pages I don't know that, this that track this stuff. Like, when you put your tweet out, they, they have pages that track it. Oh. I don't want to know, actually. Yeah, there's a there's a big Google sheet with everyone's predictions from every <laughs> event, and uh, it gives you like a ranking of like who is actually the best predictor. <laughs> I don't think. Odi Pixel where. is actually up there at the very top. <laughs> he was next to Knoxville. Uh, all right, Smoke Gank now from Invictus Gaming coming down. Ori up with a Firefly. They got the lasso over on Burning. They need to kill him on freaking time lapse, and they're able to do so. The nuke is there. 
Abed also available. Vax back into the wall. That's a good silence for Drow Ranger. At least she got the false promise to stand her ground. XSS trying to get rid of that aura by standing on top of her. Able to do it, but he's lost his entire team while he does it. Forever and Abed will survive and they'll chase XSS into the trees with the scream, with the flame break. Too much dot. Triple kill for Forev and the bottom tower to boot. Digital chaos. So difficult for Invictus Gaming just to kill. And they brought the Alchemist in the first time he puts that Radiance to use in a team fight. It looked like uh, Burning wasn't aware that the Queen of Pain went for Orchid first. He ran in, there was a sentry place, he got Orchid and just killed off straight away and didn't have any impact in the fight. I really like this build. I think this uh, autopiloting of, uh, of the Veil that almost everyone goes for in co I just think there are some games where Orchid first is just a better choice. I really like it, this game from Abed as well. It counters a couple of heroes very, very well. It's great against Weaver, great against Nyx, and great against the Darkseer. Um, really a key pickup in that fight for them. Mid lane again, there's your Orchid. Going to work on Bobrika. Bulba was the one being initiated on once more, but Bobrika's just not strong enough to win that fight. This is a good play call as well. I'm pretty sure DC are going to get this one. Yeah, there's, there's no one to really contest this. The Alchemist can't fight at the moment. He's still going back into farm mode. Haha, ah, you lost. Burning was last today. What? Burning died. Oh. Wow. <laughs> now we just need Forever to die and not up it. I'll give up with ages. No! Now we just need OP to fall apart, doesn't get the highest net worth, and then, <laughs> and then we're really good, right? Yeah. yeah. Really good. <laughs> right, we need one to one to five tower kills in the next six minutes. That sounds... That sounds... It's just crazy, like, the fact that it's forever. Forever as well as Abed. Like, they're yeah. the ones who are battling to stay, like, to be the last person to die. Forever's Batrider has been so good this tournament so far. Very, very good against OG yesterday as well in the first game. I think he, I believe he went like 5 1 and 26, and his death was very on, early on in the laning stage. His mid game reads and his movements are exceptional so far. He's playing a very good bat rider, and it doesn't surprise me that DC first pick it even with Nyx in the pool. He's playing against a counter pick even. Mason's on the hunt. A fresh Shadow Blade picked up from him. Doesn't find anybody close by and uh, just wants to push the tier 2 tower in the mid. I suppose we might be losing out in this one as well. The tower one? Yeah, well, you got... You, I suppose we got five minutes. But it's the fact that DC is now gaining momentum. The fact that Mason is probably going to look to be bringing down more and more buildings. Are they going to get six towers in five minutes now? That would be a pretty tall That's point. kind of the end of the game. <laughs> Very true. I don't think that's happening. So our, our prediction is safe then. Yeah, looking good. I'm three out of four so far. What about you? All right. So know what mood you woke up in today? <laughs> uh, looking over the experience and the gold, DC are sitting on a slight advantage. It's not that big, but if you're ahead on gold against Alchemist minute 21, it's generally a pretty good sign because Alchemist will be very rich. And if you look at the core distribution of money b beyond that, the next three are DC by a decent margin. This Weaver is poor, and he is item item countered by this Orchid. Burning went for a first item Diffusal Blade. Um, has a lot of value against a couple of things in this game. It's good against the Fates Edict, um, against the Batrider, just to be able to create space, and it's kind of it. I guess he can also... Oh, that's that's the main things, I suppose. Boba? Uh, they, they were trying to look for a gank up on top lane. If they were looking to hunt down OP, because they put down an Observer what this watches at least part of his triangle stack. Good read from Dubin. Get the hell out. That's because they've got an aggressive ward. It's about to time out, it's got three seconds left on it. But it was watching a lot of the movement of IG aggressively coming into their own jungle. So they just bailed out. And the line was drawn previously. After that mid tier 2 town fell down, Bulba instantly drew the line to say, you know what, guys, we're going to circle around, we go through our jungle, and then we come up through bottom lane. Remove the last remaining out of tower of Invictus Gaming. Together very nicely here. This time, of course, with an Aegis in the pockets of Mason. Oh, he finds Darkseer here. He does not. Darkseer is not coming for it. Darkseer doesn't want to be anywhere near this. No. Like. Shift the wave out, it's fine, but this tower will be falling, I think. Uh, IG will not be fighting for anything else than their high ground at this point. It's it's too difficult. And it looks like an even game right on the graph, but uh, the way the goal is distributed, I think DC are hitting a very serious power spike right now that they can use. So IG will just try to split push and farm as much as they can and get some key items. And Alchemist is getting his Manta. He wants to buy it, but he can't get to the shop. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a problem. And 
by the looks of it, DC's not going to give up this push. Like, you just got a fresh BKB over on the Queen of Pain, so she's ready to fight. Mason's got the range to attack with. He's got potentially ability to get out with a Shadow Blade. You've still got the Oracle behind him. You go forever with the Blink and Four Staff, so he can get in and out quickly. He has a dominated creep. It's very tanky. It's giving him a lot of hits in here. The bluff, and this should be the end of this way, but then the next one comes in. Yep, they're trying to get rid of the Observe War Blink. Lasso, well, Spike Carapace will actually end up catching out forever. The Sonic Wave, it hits on three. The wall, as well as Storm, it only catches the Batrider, allowing Armband under protection of his BKB to do his work. However, Bulba, still with the bugs on him, had so much negative armor, he'll end up dropping in the back wall, pulling Armband and Dubu back in again. Dubu will sacrifice himself to free Armband from the shackles that was the IG fight. And Arbed will be able to blink away. Already Mason has TP'd up towards the top. They're getting the hell out of there. That was not the way they thought that fight would go down. This is why Nyx is the bad counter, or at least one of them. That was all the reaction of Bobka right there. He instantly ran into the Firefly with the uh, Spike Carapace. So the... If you if he took like just half a second more to react to that, that would have been a kill, and they would have started pushing the base. But this very quick Carapace allowed the... The rest of IG to save the target, they used their shrine, they fought inside their own base with the shrine next to them, and this fight completely fell apart for DC. So It's actually amazing the difference as well in the damage. That was 5k damage being done by the Alchemist compared to everybody else in his team. Radiance Gaming. Yep. That's a lot of damage in the base in these long extended fights. And there goes your Aegis the Immortal. So DC lose the Aegis, normally that's when you expect them to back out, but thanks to their Observer Ward, and Lasso coming off cooldown in, in one oh, second Bobica time. again. <gasps> He just reveals that he goes straight past the blink line, so it does catch out Q, so disruptable fall. Bobaker in the right place all the time. They might have got two kills if they plopped down the sentry there from Dubu, but... They're going to lose their tier 2 tower on bottom if, uh, if no one comes back. And the trade-off is going to do some damage to the tier 3 tower in mid. Radiant solutions are being pretty annoying. Mason missing. Like, our three out of the first four hits he did on, on the illusion too. Well, IG need to do something about this. They're actually just losing their tower. Oh, there you base. go. Blink back wall, and they actually four star up. Queen of Pain into the base. He'll be saved and allowed out. The Bulba has to sacrifice himself. Glimpse. Oh, they He's pulled okay. him back in again. But Dubu's given him so many heals, the Queen of Pain will be able to survive. But again, Dubu, how many times must he die for his team? I actually don't think that was the worst thing in the world for DC. They lose two heroes, but they almost got a tier three, and it was two supports. So it's kills, but it's fairly low impact kills for IG. No core is dead. Um, and the item I'm mainly waiting for here to see if DC can close out this game is the Black King Bar on the Bad Rider. I think that is the item that's going to change everything. Uh, IG don't have any save for the lasso. They only have the counterplay of the Nyx Carapace, and if that is eliminated by a BKB, Forev can find a target and guarantee that he gets pulled outside the base and they will just kill it all. Boba Cup. That was a career. See ya. Had the Silver Edge recipe on it. Mason almost had enough money to finish the entire thing too. And now, well, Orchid, they do find Nyx Assassin. Bobaka playing the high ground vision game. Gets back down again. Spike Carapus turns for only a one stun. And Mason will come in to help put down the pesky bug infestation. Easily worth it for Bobaka though. Forced the rotation, he got a courier kill, got a lot of information for his team, and there's nothing really to lose. His death timer is very low, he's only level 11. So, But now you also up. see the fact that him moving around like that in the future is going to be very difficult. Bulba bought a gem, put it on the Queen of Pain. So they have the detection for him now. Yep. They've had enough. And Brand here they come again. Is... They, they really want to take this mid. They got the dominated catapult. Uh, Siege creep. It's actually gonna get it by itself. <laughs> He's just gonna. Okay. OP creep. Draw aura. It's pretty nasty when you put draw aura on a siege creep like that. It's strong. They it do lose the tier though. two tower on bottom lane. So like you've taken the tier three, means you open up the shrines of Invictus Gaming. So that's an advantage for Digital Chaos. I think they should be looking to the. Northwest Shrine. They probably could have gone there right away after they took this tower with the Siege Creep. I don't think IG would have been able to connect there in time. And taking out that Shrine at this point is a really, really big strategic advantage because Roche is entering respawn cycle. It is quite a while though. Uh, it's going to be like another, what's that, two minutes, roughly. Fun times to check uh, the gold per minute of OP. Last time we checked it was 666. This time I checked it, 777. <laughs>
So we'll, uh, we'll give it a little bit longer and then we'll have 888. Yeah. This is, at this rate, probably not going to be a 1k game, fortunately no. for me. Pause. But it might also not be Bolo. a 900 game for you. Oh. Catch him out. Here for Abed. Do you want to try and fight this? Hook shot down. Bovica actually in the middle of it. Lasso. And they're going to cliff the Alchemist. He does have a TP scroll. So if he can get down from this if he wants to, but Arbed able to isolate out Burning with the Orc at the pop won't be enough. Burning gets his time lapse off, running back to the safety of his other teammates. Even Ferev continuously spying Carapace stunned up because his Firefly was working against him. They back him into a wall combination. Dupin will try and keep him alive. Just nuke up as much as you possibly can. Allow him to blink away to safety. You'll get hit by the concoction. He did. Underneath oh, the he's tower. Not dead. He's still alive for the moment. The flame break will give him the space, but the radiance burn. He will survive under his tier three tower. Back with the rest of the fight. IG all over the Dro Ranger. Mason will fall down. Dupu again has to give his life unwillingly this time around. He actually hoped to survive. And Invictus Gaming very quick on the rotation, so they want to catch out our bed on the top. That fight would have been a totally different story if Abed got one more attack off of the Weaver or if somebody helped him. He Orchided, he used his entire spell combo and didn't kill the Weaver. So one thing is that Weaver survived, but it's the fact that he blew his entire combo on this specific hero. So all of the damage was in vain. He used key cooldowns, did absolutely nothing with it. And then that fight was a, a big loss for DC. So IG starting to build some serious advantages now. They have a 5k gold lead now and uh, We'll be racking up more and more on the Alchemist as these Boots of Travel come out soon. Together with that Octarine core, his his farming speed will be ramped up pretty significantly now. He's rapidly approaching that six slot period. And, yeah. you, and you talk about like committing all of your bursts into just one hero to bring him down. Like We still have the sharing of Aghanim Scepters that come in later. Digital Chaos, there, they're on a clock. And they at least see Roshan. They want the Aegis team all to help them secure a lane of racks if possible. As for Rev. Sentry ward down. They don't actually, yeah, they, they see the Bat Rider just on the edge. And it's thanks to this observer what they have planned. This is dangerous to do against Darkseer. This is a really dangerous fight. Oh, they're easy. wrapping around. IG have come all the way around the back. Bobica gets the double stun and the one o'clock. Or will make it a triple. Combining up with the Weaves, you've got Bulba, who has to be saved by Dubu, not the core. Arbed BKB won't help him at all. He'll go down. Mason has the high ground position, but now burning right on his tail. They can glitch back down the Batrider, but Mason, he cannot afford to die. But now you've actually got Exorcist as well as burning all over him. They need to kill him off, and they will be able to do so. Mason, that last attack will do it. Three heroes lost for Digital Chaos. Dubu will be able to, be able to TP out. But the fight that Dubu survives is the worst one of all for Digital Chaos. Now they lose Roshan as well. Yep. Aegis and Cheese for IG. The, Al the Alchemist will be taking the Aegis and the Cheese goes in the backpack of Burning. So... It seems like uh, DC have kind of missed their timing window now. They had a really good opportunity, but that's how it goes with Drow strats against this, and that might have been the game that IG were aiming to play. They were like, okay, we know we're going to get behind, we're going to play a really good defensive, uh, one or two good defensive fights, and then we know we can take this one late with Alchemist. And they executed it very nicely, a couple of good combos with uh, Vacuum into Static Storm especially, have been doing a lot of work for them. And now they have, out of nowhere, an 11k gold lead after that fight. And yeah. this is going to be hard to bring back for DC at this point. It's just going to keep increasing. The advantage for DC is the fact that they did push out so many lanes early on. So Invictus Gaming is still trying to recover their side lanes. They still have to burn through tier 1 tower up on top lane. Even though they've gotten through the mid as well as the bottom. It'll take them time, which gives an opportunity for Digital Chaos to, to still potentially catch out Invictus Gaming. They still have a small opportunity here. Yeah, they need to they need to find a pick or two instead of going for a five-man fight at this point. Uh, they're not going to be able to brute force the door open any longer. Has to be a key pick that they think doesn't have buyback. For example, if they knew the split of heroes right now, I think the rotation toward top could definitely be successful. Darkseer is fairly far away from his team, uh, but obviously this is just a mind game, and DC think they're all there yeah, and will not be trying for this play. And at this point, the team is connected for IG apart from him, so... They feel confident that they can just send OP in front and that DC aren't even interested in trying to fight, and they are very right. Yeah, 
So just playing efficiency here. So this is easy towers, basically. Yeah. Victor's game will remove the last ones from the outer side. Uh, DC, if they want to, they can still attack into... Like, they did still take down the tier 3 tower, and both shrines from Victor's Gaming are up on the field. So if Basin just slips over before the push comes, they can still do that. Like, any kind of gold, anything to fight with. Like, Arbed's scrambling to get the money to finish up his Shiva's guard at the moment. You've got Varev, who's a little bit short of the money for his BKB. Doing the defense of the top lane. We also should keep in mind, too, the fact that Burning has another save to his name. He's the man holding onto the Gs. So you got the Aegis Immortal on the Alchemist. Always a fun choice if he gets caught when Chemical Rage is down and then respawns. Yep. It's true. The BKB for Batrider is still the... can be the saving grace for DC. It's, uh, it's the most important item. And he will be getting it now. So let's see if DC can make something out of that. I think I still think realistically now it's the timing, as I said, was is too late, and IG managed to do exactly what they needed to do. Uh, but if he finds, I think you want to find and burst the Weaver first off. Alchemist kill, killing Alchemist twice is very unlikely with the backline that he has, yeah. and the other heroes are probably not high enough impact to win the fight if you catch like a Nyx, for example. It's still a nice kill. He has a gem, but you, you need something big here. You need something really big. Darkseer would also not be a bad grab. There's just too many heroes that can cause them problems. Even Disruptor, it's like everyone of Invictus Gaming is able to control up this fight. And if you get that blink into the wall of Disruptor, like with a vac from uh, from Darkseer, that's that's death in itself. And you can't silence the Darkseer. You can't control him. He's got himself Greaves, so he'll break free. Yeah, he might be the best target actually, for the Batrider. That's just, that's just still remove, the nice thing. Remove for the team fight control. Yeah, the nice thing for DC is that they know for a fact that there can't be a counterplay to this BKB in this game. There's unless they go like Abyssal on Alchemist or something, then they can't stop this. Uh, Lotus Orb is technically a possibility, reflecting the lasso, and then both of them just stand still. But nobody's building it. Oh, DC so. are coming out now. All of IG are together, so they don't get an advantage of getting one quick pick off. Maybe they catch IG unawares. And, okay, now they are starting to separate. Burning's a little bit further away. They put the Observer Ward down. They see the Alchemist. Burning quickly comes back over. They try and break him with a Silver Edge on the Alchemist, but then the Vac into the wall from Darkseer. Catching out three. Yolasso has been committed onto Bovica. Dragging him further away, but it's not really helping out. You've already lost the Oracle. The Fire Split up into two different pieces. No peek. He just goes solo against the Clockwork, while Mason, he will go down the mid. They've lost too many with no buybacks. It seemed like a last roll of the dice for DC. And while well, it came up, Snake Eyes. Oh, they're going to get the Queen here as well. Yeah, Look at that. She's yes. gone. He does have my back, but this is definitely one lane of Rax. I think it could be two here for IG. They didn't even lose their Aegis. They lost Burning. That was the only thing they lost. Their combos were perfect, their team fights were wonderfully split up, and you could just see OP ha loving his time. Uh, he got to one on one a clockwork. Uh, th this, this fight for DC fell, fell flat because they couldn't get a good lasso. They got a lasso on Bobica, but they didn't kill him. And then that means the Weaver. Yes, Weaver did get killed by Quap, but it took so long because he had cheese. And eventually this will be... There we go. Lane for IG. What's the Alchemist GPM? 928. Come on, buddy. We can go a little bit further. If they kept pushing and they kept taking the Raxes, maybe you'd actually have enough GPM. I still think he's getting a bounty. Oh, 300 five to is, is this all you want to look at right now? <laughs> it's just like, okay, I'll, I'll just keep the gold per minute. He's getting as shrine, the... he's getting CS. Nice, nice. Keep it up. OP. Cheering for you, buddy. Reach that 1k mark. 933. <laughs> oh, we'll see. Uh, but right now, Digital Chaos, uh, again, like, no window of opportunity I thought they had was that one. Uh, that that little fight. That small window to potentially get a pick off. But Burning came back so quickly. They put down that Observer Ward and just everyone turned around. And here comes DC once more. They try and find around where they have vision. So they have their own Observer and Sentry Ward up. But thanks to the Dire Observer Ward sitting inside the base as well as inside the jungle, they understand the Digital Chaos have left home. So, no one's in a position from IG where they can get caught out without friends quickly coming up behind them. And they're playing it very safely here. Aghanims has been pulled for the first time onto the Nyx, so Bobakir got a lot stronger. 
he can now turn himself into a pile of dirt, which is really good. You mean he could be brood wall? We do have yep. day nine at this event, so it makes sense. Yeah, he's gonna love that. <laughs> he's like, wait, wait, wait! I know that! I know that! <laughs> I've seen this mechanic before. <sighs> Alright, so Roshan's got just over a minute before he could spawn up. Which is... Seems like an eternity, your digital chaos at the moment. Especially as you start to lose your shrines, there goes the last remaining outer shrine. And Arbus just space creating. Push top lane. Push any lane that doesn't currently have Invictus Gaming in it. Force them to come back and defend. Not that the defense is that difficult, you could just send the Archimus and then he'll BT into the lane when they're pushing. You can still you can still tell the DC know what uh, they they have like a plan and they're executing it and they're doing the best they can at this point. It's just extremely hard, but this is the kind of way you will want to play in this situation. If you just sit back in your base and wait, you're gonna lose. So they're trying to create opportunities for themselves. It hasn't worked out just yet, but they're trying to uh, to create any sort of opening where IG can be out of position and maybe get one or two key kills to get themselves uh, a little bit back into the game. Mm -hmm. The openings just haven't really been presented. And that's just IG. a tight ship being run by IG. Yeah, they're playing They're playing it very, uh, very calmly here. It's good vision, it's good movement around the map. Like, they're not just huddling in one area and focusing on one lane. It still feels like, at one point or the other, they control the, the, the map in every area and Digital Chaos whenever they go out looking for them. IG just rotate, and now they come in for the fight. Oh, the back, the wall, the double stun. Batrider being caught, as well as Dirt Ranger. They have to push him up with a glimpse. He'll pull him back in again. And Mason, well, he's got money for buyback. Bulba, he won't be so lucky. Also falling, Dupu caught alone outside the base. No friends for him. And this is Invictus Gaming now focusing onto the bottom lane of Rax. And the Dirt Ranger, who does have buyback, Still not expending it, and they understand this game is done. This game is over, and Cinderin. No! Oh wow! I... You are shot. Oh, I cracked really hard. Though. Sorry guys. <laughs> your eyes, your ears are okay. Nine sixty one, Toby. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> like, if, my, if I haven't blown my own ears out by now, I don't know who will. <laughs> All right. Well, good performance from IG. Yeah. Uh, played very solidly. I still think DC also uh, showed a good game for the first like 20 minutes or so. They built the advantage they needed. They played their lineup very